on an American cheeseburger. Do you really know what some of your favorite fast food chains have been up to? These are 10 of the biggest fast food scandals ever. The old finger in the chili scam. Chicken biscuits a bruiser, Morty. How much do you enjoy Wendy's chili? Some diners consider a staple of the fast food chain's menu, while others find the meat that they use to be a little bit suspect. This has led to many online users speculating that the beef in Wendy's chili is actually made using chopped up bits of day-old hamburger that have been left to dry out under a heat lamp for hours at a time. But if that doesn't sound disturbing enough, in 2005, one woman even went so far as to claim that Wendy's chili contained a body part. According to 45-year-old Anna Ayala, she found a severed human finger in amongst her kidney beans and vegetables. And worse than that, she apparently hadn't even noticed it until she had already taken a bite into the digit. But authorities were quick to begin noticing holes in the woman's story. While forensics were able to prove that what she had in her possession was indeed a real human finger, Daddy bit me. there didn't appear to be any bite taken out of it. While Ayala had claimed that the finger had been at least partially cooked, authorities could find no sign of this, and no employees at Wendy's had reported any injury that might explain the finger's presence. It was eventually discovered that Ayala's husband had gotten the finger off of a co-worker who had recently suffered an industrial accident, and the couple had come up with the scam together looking to score a big chunk of cash out of Wendy's. The couple both pled guilty in court to charges of conspiracy to file a false insurance claim and attempted grand theft, with damages exceeding $2.5 million. Ayala received a nine-year sentence, while her husband wound up being sentenced to 12 years. Skin in an Arby's Sandwich It's a focus group of Arby's executives watching us eat. Not every chain is innocent when it comes to including body parts in amongst their list of ingredients. Arby's has a surprisingly long history of this sort of thing actually happening. The first event took place back in 2005, when one David Scheiding filed a lawsuit against the fast food chain after taking a bite out of his chicken sandwich and discovering that something about it just didn't feel right. Upon investigating, he uncovered a slice of human skin roughly three-fourths of an inch long, clear enough that he could still make out the individual's fingerprints on it. When a health investigator paid a visit to that particular Arby's location, they noticed that a manager was wearing a bandage on his right thumb as well as a latex glove. The manager then explained how he had Ouch. cut his thumb while shredding lettuce, and although he had sanitized the area at the time, he had not taken the time to throw out the bin of lettuce he had been preparing, which explained how a bit of the manager's thumb had wound up in the customer's sandwich. Just fool me once. Shame on you. Shame on you. And as if it wasn't bad enough for something like this to happen once, Arby's would find themselves facing a similar scandal again in 2012. This time, 14-year-old Ryan Hart would take a bite out of his roast beef sandwich, only to find a full finger inside. As it would turn out, an Arby's employee had suffered a severe injury to her hand while preparing the boy's meal, and although she was taken away to deal with the emergency, the meal was completed by employees who were unaware of any contamination. Hart's own mother described her son as being traumatized by the event, claiming that he'd been having trouble sleeping and eating and had needed to be prescribed with medication, while the Arby's location in question was quickly shut down. The Secret Service sues Denny's All right, Denny's. It's always open. In 1993, 21 uniformed members of the Secret Service who had been tasked with setting up security for Bill Clinton were given only an hour for their lunch break, and so they decided to go to Denny's. Obviously, their party was a little bit too large for them to all sit together, so they were split up, which is what led to one table being occupied by six black Secret Service members. Although all 21 agents had their orders taken at the same time, the tables that were dominated mostly by white agents had their meals brought to them speedily, while the table where the six black agents were seated were left waiting. Steaks cooked medium rare. Can I get my steak cooked? That just wasn't a no question. 
Though they asked what was taking so long, the only answer their waitress would give them was that their meals were coming, even though they could actively see their own plates sitting under a heat lamp. Once the hour was up, the Secret Service members were forced to take their leave, and it was only then that a Denny's waitress offered the six waiting agents a platter that they were forced to turn down. One among the six, Agent Robin D. Thompson, reported that he felt humiliated by the entire ordeal, and a lawsuit was filed accusing Denny's of denying the six men of their civil rights. We're always on the up and up, so if it's your first time here, then hit that subscribe button and never miss out. Thanks! Chipotle Norovirus Scandal Love Chipotle. They make a really nice burrito over there. The largest ever fine imposed in a food safety case was unfortunately settled against Chipotle in 2020, when it was discovered that one of our favorite burrito chains was actually responsible for infecting over 1,100 of their American customers with norovirus between the years of 2015 and 2018. When speaking with Chipotle employees, it was discovered that the restaurant would rarely allow them to take a day off if they were feeling sick, and that they hadn't received the proper training required for proper food safety procedures, meaning that their meat was often being sold dangerously undercooked. Chipotle agreed to pay a $25 million fine in multiple payments, and the company CEO was forced to make a public apology. McDonald's lands in a bit of hot water. I remember my dad took us to McDonald's the very first morning they had breakfast. Many of us have heard the story of the woman who managed to get rich suing McDonald's after she'd spilled her coffee on her lap while holding the cup between her knees while driving. And while many of us have been quick to dismiss the whole issue as her fault, after all, who doesn't know that coffee's hot? There's actually a lot more to the story than you may realize. 79-year-old Stella Liebeck of Albuquerque, New Mexico had been sitting in her parked car with her grandson when the coffee spilled. And though she acknowledged that the spill was her fault, what she actually objected to was the ridiculously hot temperature of the coffee served to her. Liebeck suffered third-degree burns on her legs and genitals requiring surgery, and her injury was so severe that there was a chance she may not have survived it. I want you to take that coffee and spill it on him. Worse even than that, McDonald's had apparently known that their coffee was a hazard, as in the decade before the Liebeck case, they'd received roughly 700 reports of customers burning themselves on their coffee. And yet, McDonald's continued to insist that 190 degrees Fahrenheit was simply how their customers liked their coffee. Originally, Liebeck had no intentions of taking McDonald's to court, but she had wanted them to pay her medical expenses, which was estimated at $20,000. When McDonald's offered her a paltry $800 in compensation, Liebeck decided to go through with her lawsuit in 1994. The jury unanimously sided with Liebeck upon hearing her story, even suggesting that she deserved a larger compensation than she was asking for, and McDonald's was legally required to reduce the temperature that they brewed their coffee to. Taco Bell's Mystery Meat I would like you to accompany me to Taco Bell. Taco Bell's meat has long been considered to be a little suspect, but in 2011, Alabama law firm Beasley Allen made the shocking accusation that their beef technically couldn't even be considered beef according to the USDA standards. Rather, their findings seemed to suggest that only 35% of their beef filling actually contained beef, while the rest of it was filled out using a mix of oats, seasoning, and other fillings. And so selling it under the label of beef was actually false advertising. Taco Bell took on Beasley Allen's lawsuit with an almost eager sort of enthusiasm, as they seemed to see this as an opportunity to defend the quality of their beef in the eyes of the public. Taco Bell spent somewhere between three and four million dollars on an ad campaign trying to spread the word that their beef was actually 88% beef rather than the 35% claimed in the lawsuit. Beasley Allen would eventually come to drop the lawsuit, but even so, you can still hear whispers about Taco Bell's use of mystery meat to this very day. Chicken head found at McDonald's. Oh my god, when is the last time we've been at McDonald's?
One of the most forwarded emails in the year 2001 told the story of a young mother who took her daughter to McDonald's to pick up some chicken wings, which were being offered at McD's at the time. When the mother lifted one to her mouth, her daughter screamed at her to stop. When she looked closer at the chicken in her hand, she realized that it was actually a deep-fried chicken head. As proof, the email came with a picture attached showing a woman holding a deep-fried piece of chicken in the shape of a chicken's head. Secrets out, chicken man. I'll take care of this. Believe it or not, this is a picture of one Catherine Ortega, who actually did discover a chicken's head in amongst her order of McDonald's chicken wings. Although it may be worth mentioning that the forwarded email still exaggerated the story a little bit. Ortega bought a box of McDonald's Mighty Wings, which were being test marketed at the time in the Virginia area where Ortega lived. When she brought the box home, she discovered in amongst the wings one that looked a little strange. And when she took a closer look at it, she realized that it looked exactly like a deep-fried chicken's head. Reporters who were able to examine the head confirmed that the breading looked very similar to the kind that McDonald's had been using at the time, and that it genuinely did appear to be a real head. But as Ortega chose not to pursue legal action, we may never know for sure if that's what happened. A deep-fried chicken head found amongst a box of deep-fried chicken parts may not technically count as a foreign contaminant, which may explain Ortega's choice to keep the issue out of the courts. But even still, this story stands as a stark reminder to always take a good look at what you're eating before you put it in your mouth. Bad look for Subway. This state-of-the-art Subway sandwichery in our cafetorium Jared Fogle became an inspiration for many after appearing in multiple Subway ads, claiming that his 200-pound weight loss was due to the chain's healthier alternatives. Under his nonprofit, the Jared Foundation, he would even visit schools across America to discuss obesity, but with some less than savory intentions. In 2015, Fogle was found guilty of possessing illicit materials containing minors. Subway was obviously quick to drop him as their spokesperson, but the whole situation situation reflected poorly on the brand. Papa John's founder resigning as CEO. I'm like literally in a Papa John's right now. Papa John's Pizza may be named for founder John Schnatter, but it was his offensive remarks in 2017 that lost him his place within his company. Often seen as the face of the pizza company, Schnatter famously blamed poor pizza sales on NFL players taking a knee in protest during the national anthem. He later went on to use a racial slur during a conference call meant to serve as media training. The scandal attached to this issue was simply too much for the famous pizza chain to shake off and Schnatter was forced to resign as CEO. Beef burgers made of horse? Bon appetit! In January of 2013, authorities reported that frozen beef burgers that were actively being sold in Irish and British supermarkets contained traces of horse meat, despite packaging that claimed that the patties had been made using 100% beef. Not only had horse meat been found in the beef being sold at the supermarket, but also at several major fast food restaurants across 13 European countries. The amount of horse meat that was discovered to be contaminating Taco Bell's ground beef was considered to be substantial enough for them to pull all beef products from their menu for a time, while the company that supplied Burger King with meat in the UK and Ireland recalled a whopping 10 million beef patties in response to this scandal. The source of the contamination was eventually traced back to four separate subsidiaries of the ABP food group, leading to multiple companies cutting ties with them as a supplier. The most important the thing is you gotta give the people what they want. Although eating horse meat won't necessarily kill you, many customers were still outraged over the thought that they hadn't known what they were putting into their body, especially when the packaging outright lied by claiming that they were purchasing 100% beef. And if the horses in question had been used for sport, there was always the possibility that the meat might contain traces of the drug phenylbutazone, which has actually been banned for use in animals raised for food. Not only that, but the analysis stated that 20 23 out of 27 of the recorded samples had also been noted to contain samples of pig meat. While we're certainly glad to hear that some of our favorite chains took action against the use of horse meat, this story still stands as a stark example of how you can't always trust what the label claims.
Searching for another great video? Just tap or click and smash that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.